So how does OFDM overcome inter-symbol interference? And let's look at this data stream. And if we transmitted this data stream exactly as it was without using OFDM, then our symbols would last for, let's say, TS. We'll call that TS for a symbol. And the overall set of eight symbols, for example, in this case, let's call it TO. And we're going to, that's actually going to be the time for our OFDM symbol. But for now, let's look at TS. So if we sent them like this, exactly modulated by multiplying by a carrier, then this waveform would have a power spectral density centered at the carrier frequency that looks like this. And uh, often it's drawn for OFDM with a sync, with a sync function uh, which has uh, a single sync function, but this is the sync squared because this is the power spectral density. And this is centered at the carrier frequency. And this is with respect to frequency. So this is the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. So it shows you the frequency band of use if you were to send this sequence directly using this sequence with a symbol time of TS. Okay, what about Let's compare it to OFDM. As we know with OFDM, we can send each of these time samples, we send them in a different orthogonal carrier. And what does that look like? Well, that looks like here we're going to have, if we've got eight symbols uh, in our OFDM uh, symbol, then we're going to have, or eight data bits in our OFDM symbol, then we're going to have eight subchannels. And so then what we've got is a situation where we've got a, a sync square. This is again the power spectral density. So we've got the first subcarrier is going to look like this. Uh, the second one occupies the second and it's orthogonal, of course. Uh, and then the third uh, is in the third one. And this gives us the familiar OFDM with the subcarriers where they're all adding up. But of course, as they're orthogonal, so at the carrier for each subcarrier at the center of each subcarrier the contribution from the others is zero so this is our uh, traditional uh, picture but you often see it without the sync squared because often they they plot it for exactly just a square waveform whereas we're here uh, i'm plotting the power spectral density it's more more uh, correct to do that when you're looking at an entire sequence uh, in a random data sequence so we know that each of these, I won't draw them all, but each of these down to eight uh, in the frequency domain uh, occupies a different subcarrier in OFDM. Well, let's think backwards to what that means in the time domain. So this one is a subcarrier F1, uh, and we're going to take a data sequence and multiply by F1, this one F2, uh, this one F3. These are the different centers of these uh, subcarriers here. So that's centered at F1, this one centered at F2, this one centered at F3, and so on. And what does that uh, mean? Well, that means in the uh, time domain, we are taking our first data uh, symbol here, which in this case, because it's binary plus and minus ones, we're going to be sending a, in this case, plus one on subcarrier one. So then we have a waveform here, which is plus one for the entire T naught or TO, TOFDM. Uh, and on the second subcarrier here, we have a minus one. So on the second subcarrier, we have a minus one for the entire TOFDM. On the third subcarrier, we have a plus one for the entire time of the OFDM symbol. Uh, and so on uh, down here. So the fourth one is a minus one and so on. And now what we can see clearly is that the uh, this goes down for eight and these continue here for uh, eight. I'll just draw them with dots down here. Okay, so now let's think about inter-symbol interference. If we're sending this sequence directly as it is without uh, any uh, OFDM, just sending it directly over the entire bandwidth, then if we have uh, an amount of delay spread which is significant on the scale of TS, then we will have into symbol interference, which we need to equalize. Uh, so in this case, for the direct one here, uh, if the delay spread, let's say if the delay spread was bigger than, let's say 10%, that's often taken as a value. If this is, if the delay spread is bigger than 10% of TS, we will have inter symbol interference if we send them directly. 
But now what we can see with OFDM, where we're sending in different subcarriers, each of our symbols on each of our subcarriers lasts for a much longer time. It lasts for the full time of the OFDM sequence, uh, so the OFDM symbol, which lasts for as long as that sequence was, T naught. So now for OFDM, the delay spread uh, needs to be bigger than 0.1 of T OFDM for any, uh, I'll call this OFDM here and T OFDM up there, uh, it needs to be 0.1 of TOFDM for it to be significant. And TOFDM is much bigger than TS. So by sending with an OFDM uh, um, format, uh, you have much longer symbols for each of the narrowband orthogonal subcarriers. And it means that the delay spread needs to be much bigger before you start getting significant intersymbol interference that you need to worry about. So this is a, a clear case where OFDM gives you a very big advantage in terms of equalization. So hopefully visualizing it this way has helped. Uh, if it does, uh, give the video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the webpage in the description below the video where there's a full categorizer link of all the videos on the channel.